So I have an extra crib because a friend gave it to my wife for the baby, but she wanted a new crib because she didn't know anything about this one really and there was no information. So I'm going to be turning it into a kind of drying rack for laundry. I think this might be made out of oak and uh, I'll probably try to match it with oak, but I might use buckthorn. I'm going to drill all the way through here and use a dowel to uh, connect these. This hole is so undersized that uh, I should be able to knock it in and just the friction should be enough to hold it, I think. Okay, so this is what this looks like at the moment. Now this part is going to be the top hinge, so I'll need to stick those same dowels in through here. The more I think about this, if I uh, center both of these, <clears throat> then all I really need is a board right here, and uh, the center hinge can just stay in place. I'm going to do two inches by one and a quarter, I think. So I have this piece of buckthorn here, and it's a rough cut here right off the mill. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of finishing work on it, but as you can see, we have some neat live edge here. I'd be tempted to use this section just to have the live edge. It feels like it's on there pretty well. But uh, I'm trying to go for a little bit more integrity. And if you've never used buckthorn, I would compare it to something in the apple family, probably. It's a softer hardwood. And if you've never worked with something in the apple family of woods, then, uh, well, somewhere between pine and oak, I guess, maybe. Looks like some nice grain pattern here. This is going to be about 24 and a half. And I don't have a uh, planer jointer, I just have a planer. Not that I couldn't use my planer, but it's a little bit occupied right now with this pile of uh, crap from another project. So I'm just going to use my table saw as a planer. So, how do you plane with a table saw? I have here a little guide that will follow the line right there. I hold this piece that I'm planing firmly against my guide here and uh, just do a rip cut. So now we have two straight edges forming a square and what that's going to allow me to do is uh, I can trim the rest of it just like a typical table saw maneuver. Here I have my nice square piece of stock. Pretty neat, huh? Taking something rough cut. If you've watched my other videos you know that I cut down trees and I mill them and I season them and then I build whatever I need out of them. The only good part about cold weather is that it keeps your beer cold. What I have here is my lazy man's router table. So I'm just going to round off a couple of these edges. Well, I guess these ones too, these end grain edges. Cool. All right, so now I have all of these fine edges nice and rounded, except for the back. The back is going to be against the wall, so I don't really care. For all the 
ladies out there watching this, you may be wondering why guys are all so good at this motion. It's from sanding wood. Oh, you thought I meant it was from vigorously petting dogs? No, not all guys like dogs. Plus dog smell. There we go, nice and smooth. I should probably do a rough fitting on this, but I'm pretty confident it's gonna be fine. So I have my holes here and here for the hinges, and I have 16 on center spacing here to uh, screw this into the studs. And I think I'm gonna put some boiled linseed oil on it. So this stuff is from Lowe's, it's Crown. Supposedly there is nothing special about this. Like, uh, you know, it doesn't have any kind of gross chemicals in it. I don't know. I don't think they have to list ingredients. But, uh, my personal thought is, if you're doing anything that involves food safety or your kids licking it or something weird like that, don't use boiled linseed oil. If, if there's any doubt for me, I just use plain walnut oil from the grocery store, like you'd use for salads. It's a little pricey, but it's a gorgeous finish, and, uh, you know, if somebody chews on it or something, it, it's not going to kill them. So I have to do the uh, bottom part where this is going to sort of latch just by gravity. So I think I'm going to just use uh, another chunk of that same piece of buckthorn I got the other piece from. Here's kind of what I'm thinking about, like maybe a couple rips to do that and then do this, you know. So, I'll be the first to admit that I am a massive dork about uh, bevel cuts. I just think they are freaking awesome, because let's face it, they are. What a bevel cut is, is when you uh, just sort of glance the blade against the wood and you do repeat rips. It's uh, Ripping in general is kind of dangerous. I love the radial mostly for bevel cuts, actually. I don't use it for a heck of a lot more than bevel cuts. <clears throat> my table saw is kind of limited. Anyway, so you just run it through at an angle over and over and over. And I'm going to make a bit of a pool in the center here, the longer dimension of this board. I chose this side because it has some burn marks that didn't really want to sand out easily. It's pretty bad, so I'm hoping to remove some of those. So, that's pretty nifty. Not too bad. It did clean up that side. <laughs> Can't deny that. Well, I've created a bit of a dilemma for myself in terms of sanding. I'd like to be able to uh, bevel these edges as much as the router, but I'm a little bit worried about tear out. Other than these burn marks, I think that routed okay. I'm gonna use the sander on a few of these other edges though to smooth these out. All right, so I still have a few burn marks, but I'm, I'm done sanding, I don't feel like doing it anymore. <laughs> that's, that's how I know I'm done. <laughs> Anyway, this is a cool profile. You know, turned out well. I'm gonna finish off with a 220 and then I'll put a little linseed oil on it along with the other part. So here's the finished product with the linseed oil on it. I'm gonna have to give this 12 hours or so, probably a whole day. Some uh, safety about linseed oil. There's an oxidative reaction, which uh, is what causes it to dry so fast. But it can also potentially, with the exposure to oxygen, uh, especially when it's wadded up, cause a big fire. So what I like to do is uh, stick it in a spot with nothing that can burn around it, at least directly. This is just some gravel area in the back of my barn. So these pieces are about four feet, and I realized I don't even have an eight-foot wall for uh, mounting them. So I'm going to have to create a center hinge so that they'll be directly lined up like so 
and uh, you know they'll have that center hinge and that's that's for folding up when it's not in use ended up fabricating these which will uh, <laughs> I shouldn't touch this it has linseed oil on it it's still drying but these will go here to connect the uh, hinges and I'll put some cotter pins or something on the other side and a washer for spacing and in this case I actually did use some Gorilla wood glue, some PVA glue, and uh, that should connect nicely as a hinge. Here I have these uh, in place. I actually did not wait the 12 hours. I've been touching this stuff with my bare hands like an idiot. But anyway, here these are, and I have some uh, a cotter pin right here. I have a washer as a spacer here, and and I also have uh, <laughs> this very squeaky hinge here. I'm not too worried it's not going to be adjusted that often. Now, the last piece of the puzzle here is uh, how to sort of lock these together, make sure they don't come apart and uh, hit someone or something. So I was chewing it over and I realized, uh, and I had thought about it, oops, and I had thought about it before, but <clears throat> these sort of uh, tuck evenly. You notice, now my problem is I'm worried this is gonna bump the wall and cause a problem. Um, but I always put felt, there's a little tip for everyone. I always put felt uh, on anything I mount to the wall so that it doesn't pull the paint off. So I'm gonna have a bit of felt padding on here anyway between the drywall and this. And that's gonna buy me a quarter inch or so, maybe, maybe even just an eighth. But what I'll probably do is I'll put felt on this and I'll put felt on this. And then when I mount it, this whole thing will just tuck against the wall. Okay, so here is the finished product. It's uh, enormous. And apparently, uh, like my wife had found a similar project and uh, apparently they had cut this in half, which I didn't realize. Personally, I think this is fine, you know? I don't think it's really going to matter that it's uh, like four feet long. <laughs> Very utilitarian for uh, drying lots of cloth diapers. So here you can see all of the parts. Uh, I believe it will have no problem holding the weight. Partially because what seems to happen is down pressure on this eventually touches the bottom part here. And then that is directing the pressure down to that, uh, which is essentially pushing. It's, uh, it's held by that bevel cut I did, but I added felt on both sides. So it's still leaning against this bar, but it's also pushing against the wall. The only thing I don't like about it is it's very squeaky. So let me go ahead and operate this so you can see how it works. <laughs> it's like the world's worst haunted house. <laughs> Listening to that squeaking. I should have probably waxed the wood on those hinges. It's just, I know the number of times we're actually going to, uh, you know, take it out. It's going to be one of those things where it's probably always out or it's never out. Worst case scenario, I can just uh, wax those hinges and get rid of that squeak. So, from here, it looks pretty classy. Uh, it's a nice dark color, goes well against the green wall there, and uh, I think it's fine. Turned out just fine. I might do an update video if I run into any problems or end up modi modifying it further, but for now I think this turned out pretty well. And my favorite part about it is that I have made, made no permanent modifications to the crib walls themselves, you know, so Eventually, uh, we could take it to a thrift shop and, and get rid of it so somebody could actually use it as a crib again or it could be used for maybe like a baby gate or something like that. So I'm glad I didn't cut it in half, but the consequence is that it is, you know, like four feet tall. It's a, it's a large object, especially when unfolded. Anyway, if you uh, found this inspirational or uh, it gave you some ideas or you just thought it was interesting, you liked it, whatever, please like and subscribe. Thanks. Mm -hmm.